All right. I want to give you a little more cool in this lecture. Um, you know, I, I just, I remember my intro psych uh, experience and there were, there were some things that just really stuck with me. Um, and some of them, a lot of it did come from a sort of neuropsych perspective. For me, that was just a very cool way to learn about the brain and to think about things a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's jump in. We're going to talk about faces here. And I want to tell you about some weird, so we've been talking about, you know, recognizing objects and how do you recognize objects? And it seems as though when it comes to um, the objects in the world, some are created differently than others. And, and the ones that are really special is the human face. When we see human faces, um, they are especially interesting objects to recognize. You know, we can recognize so many different faces um, that are largely, you know, when you think of the features of a face, the same. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, first of all, a view from the brain. You see it in the bottom of the brain here, um, right near the occipital lobes. In fact, right semi near V1, primary visual cortex. We see these areas called the fusiform gyrus, they're sometimes called, or the fusiform face area. And it turns out when you look at somebody's face, this part lights up. So it's also there, it's also called the Broadman area 37. So this part of the, the brain. So if you think of a face, faces are largely the same. And it turns out that there is, you do not have like, super distinct eyes or super distinct nose. We can just show somebody your nose and they'd go, oh yeah, I know that person. Or your eyes or your ears. There's probably nothing special about any of your specific features. What makes your face your face is how those features all come together. And it seems like that's what this part of the brain is good at. When we recognize something because of a specific combination and, 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 um, What's the word? Things in the right place. You know, um, you know uh, certain features in certain places um, and, and maybe thinking about five or six or seven or eight features at a time. Are they all in the right place relative to each other? Um, that's what this part of the brain does and that's what we need to recognize a face. So let me tell you about some of the cool um, neuropsych around this. Two different examples we'll talk about, prosopagnosia versus Capgras syndrome. So first of all, just look at these faces. These ones on the top are all famous faces. Um, can you recognize them? Give you a few moments, let you look at that. The ones in the bottom I think are not famous faces. Uh, I think these were people that were just hanging around this lab uh, near the University of Toronto at the time this study was done. Uh, in fact, I think I might have been one of those people. I think this could be me. Uh, so these could be profs. Maybe you recognize some if you've had them as profs. Um, but these people up top, John Travolta, George Bush, uh, Tom Cruise, um, the woman that's in the James Bond movies as M. I don't know her name. That's what I know her as. Okay. Um, and so you can recognize these faces. And again, it's if, if you look, for example, even at John Travolta and Tom Cruise, you see that, you know, there's so much similarity in their faces, but there are differences. Look around the mouth and nose and his mouth and nose and sort of cheekbone stuff. And so it's the subtle arrangement of all these combinations. So interesting things can happen. First of all, if this area of the brain is damaged, People may have prosopagnosia. Um, agnosia is always a lack of knowledge. And so prosopagnosia is a that lack of knowledge around faces. And so what this means is if this happened to my sister, she was in the hospital, she had damaged that area 37. Um, if I stepped in and just stayed there very silently and she looked at me, the doctor might say, hey, do you know who this person is? She would know she knows me. So this will be the interesting distinction I want you thinking about. I would look familiar. She would see me and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that person. I know them very well. But then she might say, maybe it's somebody in my family or a really close friend. Or maybe it's like an actor on TV. In fact, if Tom Cruise were standing at the end of her bed, she might say the same thing. I know that face. It's a familiar face. Maybe I'm in his family. Maybe he's in a movie on TV. That would be all the sense she would have is familiarity, but she wouldn't recognize. 
she wouldn't say, oh, that's my brother Steve, or oh, that's Tom Cruise. It would Something about recognition would be blocked. Um, unless I spoke or did anything else to give her any cues, then she would say, oh, recognize, but she couldn't recognize me by just my face. So you can literally have this kind of brain damage where you can no longer recognize people. That's called prosopagnosia by the features of their face. Crazy. You think that's crazy? Wait till you hear this other one, Capgrass syndrome. Capgrass syndrome is essentially the reverse. So what do we mean by the reverse? This person can recognize a face, but they don't seem familiar. This leads to all sorts of really strange behavior, including murder. <laughs> this is what will sometimes happen or has sometimes happened. Somebody's had damage to the brain. They've been um, sent back home to live with their family. Uh, and in one case, uh, a woman killed her husband and cut off his head. She did this for a reason. She said, you know, I've been living with this man. I know he looks like my husband. He talks like my husband. He pretends to be my husband, but he doesn't feel right. It's not my husband. I could tell. And I kept telling everybody it wasn't my husband. It was like a robot that somehow took his body or some alien that, and nobody would believe me. And so I, I had to show them. I had to cut off his head and show that well, so it turns out it was him. <laughs> they don't ever say it was him, uh, but it was him. Uh, so literally, you can have this feeling where you can recognize people. You know who that is, but they don't feel right. Um, something about them, you're losing that sense of familiarity that should come with recognition. And when you do, you don't trust recognition. And you start to think that person is not who they seem to be. Okay. Um, that's Capgrass Syndrome kind of freaky, huh? Uh, what this points out is that there are multiple kind of things that come together to help us um, not only recognize things, but for everything to make sense. Like, yeah, yeah, we do recognize, we should recognize that person. Uh, and there's times when these things can get out of whack. Let me give you another fun example we sometimes talk about. It's called the butcher on the bus example. And the idea is you walk onto a bus and there's some guy in the back of the bus with his family and they're all going to the beach and they have beach gear and you look at that guy and you're like, I know that guy, I know that guy. And you don't look at him too closely, right? Because you just kind of glance. Where do I know that guy from? Where do I know that guy from? What are you having right now? You're having familiarity without recollection, almost like prosopagnosia, right? This person looks really familiar. You know you must know them. You just can't figure out where you know them from, where you just can't recognize. Um, and then suddenly you do. Oh, that's my butcher. He's just not behind the butcher cabinet wearing the blah, blah, blah. I didn't recognize him out of context. So recognition and familiarity often go together. And when they do, you recognize someone and they're as familiar as they should be. But when they get out of whack, weird things happen. And there's a couple of examples. By the way, um, orientation is also, also very important uh, for recognition. I'm gonna flip a face on and see how quick it takes you to recognize this person. It's hard to do this as an experiment, but I'm gonna show them to you upside, I'm gonna show the person to you upside down. If I showed them to you upside right, you'd be real quick. Um, what I hope you feel is a kind of like, uh, oh, that it takes you just a, you know, a couple seconds. You ready? Here we go. If you flip that picture upside right, you'd recognize her in a moment. Of course, this is Taylor Swift. You would recognize her just, just in a moment. But you flip them upside down and suddenly recognition really gets messed up. It needs the orientation in a certain way. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Here's the final thing I want you to start thinking about. And I'm going to come back to it um, when we talk about consciousness a little bit more. But the question is this, we have even something more special. There's faces and then there's our face, self-recognition. How does that work? And what does that say about somebody? I'm going to leave you with that because it's one of my favorite stories and I want to come back with it. I don't think I will in this chapter. I think I'll wait a little bit and come back to my story about self-recognition. Just start thinking about it for now. Okay, that's it for now. Bye-bye.